Welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at Ruben Amorim, Sporting Club de Portugal, 343, a high press, really exciting team to try out. So this is the manager who led Sporting Club de Portugal to their first league title in 19 years last year and this year they are at the top once again. So let's take a look at his 343 tactics. We're going to take a look at the players you have available. We're going to take the team into online division 6 and we're going to try to progress a little bit there playing three games. So let's start by taking a look at the tactics. Let's go. And as usual, let's take a look at the squad breakdown. So this is a three and a half star team. It's pretty even, 75 forward, 73 midfielders and 74 defense. And this is actually their default formation right here. So I haven't done any adjustments to that. Only adjustments I have done is to put defensive midfield on Palhinha. And that's the only difference in terms of the formation. Playing a 3-4-3 which a lot of teams are actually doing now. You have a lot of flexibility with your wide midfielders. You can call them wide midfielders, you can call them wing backs. But the main thing about using this kind of formation is you have a lot of flexibility when you attack because you will be able to overload on the wings, create two against one, three against two, and do some quick combinations. Especially with a team like this, you have a lot of technical players quick and technical players with good passing ability so you will be able to create two against one do some one twos some quick one twos and then whip the ball inside the box and then you will have a lot of players pushing up and going for the finish so what sporting in particular like to do when they attack they like to maintain width so the wide players are going to maintain width and they're going to build from side to side to try to open up some space in the opponent's defense. They play really patiently, they play with a lot of possession, a high possession percentage. So they will use their width, play the ball from side to side, and when they have space to push up, they will be able to create a two against one on the wing. And they like to do a lot of through pass attempts, they like to do a lot of crosses into the box. It's all about getting the players around, creating space, to be able to do the cross inside the box and go for the finish. One thing they also relied a lot on last year is the creativity and the dribbling skills of Nuno Mendes. Then you have Pedro Gonçalves on the right wing right there and Nuno Mendes on the left midfield spot. Obviously Nuno Mendes went to Paris Saint-Germain so he is there this year. They also lost Joao Mario I think in the summer. So this year's squad is a little bit different from the one in the game so just keep that in mind but basing this on last year's team uh, you can rely a lot on Nuno Mendes let's take a look at him so he is on the left offensive fullback he's fully capable of playing left midfield as well as you can see right here he has very good speed he has very good lofted pass and he has good dribbling and um, the thing about this guy he has the pinpoint cross you can one touch pass and you can do the double touch so because you have the double touch, you will be able to create some extra space in tough situations where you are one against one. And with Nuno Mendes, you have that skill to be able to do that with the double touch. And the same thing goes with Pedro Gonçalves, also known as Pote. This guy plays up on the right side there, right winger, creative playmaker. This guy scores a lot of goals in real life. So he is a uh, very complete kind of player as you can see on his skills solid dribbling solid passing solid finishing solid curl on his kicks he also has solid speed solid kicking power this guy is a really good attacking minded player but the key here is he has the double touch so we will be able to do some skills with this guy to either get around on the wing to do the pass you can also do the through pass with him and you can obviously also go for the finish. And back to the left side again, you have Nuno Mendes as a left midfielder. He will combine a lot with Nuno Santos. And Nuno Santos, cross specialist, left footed. He also inspires lofted pass one star. So when you have the ball on the wing with him, you will be able to do some crossing. He has all the good passing skills as well. One touch, through pass and pinpoint cross. 
So you can do nice combinations on the left there, Nuno Santos, Nuno Mendes. And then back to the right side, we already talked about Gonçalves. Behind him we have Pedro Porro, the Spaniard. He is uh, basically a wing back. He can also play right midfield right there, as you can see. This guy basically a solid player. He can do the through pass, but he does not have the pinpoint crossing. You use him to overload on the right with uh, Pedro Gonçalves. You get Porro around and he can do the short pass back to Gonçalves, like the cutback, and you can create some chances that way. And then as, as backups for these four players, you have actually a lot of options on the bench. You're not going to have that much of a problem, even if some of your starters are out with bad condition. One thing to keep in mind as well when you build up on the attack is you have Joao Mario in the middle right there. He will contribute offensively. Then you have Joao Palinha next to him. He's more like the defensive playmaker. And we'll get into him in a minute, but let's start by Joao Mario right here. He is creative playmaker and he inspires low pass two stars and that's a very good reason to use him in the build-up. Try to get the ball out on the wing and take it from there. As you may know, Joao Mario, he's been a Portuguese international for several years now. Very good dribbler, very good passer. He has one-touch pass, through pass, weighted pass. So this guy is basically going to be the ball distributor in the middle right there. Which takes us to the defensive playmaker writer, Palinha. So if you take a look at his skill map right there, solid defensive player. Anchorman, he will basically be your, your balance player. He will balance, balance things out when you attack. And he has solid passing, very capable defensive player, especially considering this guy is a defensive midfielder. This is some very solid skills right here. And he can man mark, intercept. He also has the fighting spirit. So the last guy on the offense, it's the striker position, right? The center forward. And here you have a very, very good player, Paulinho, left-footed goal poacher. This guy is tall, he's physical, he has some passing ability as well. Let's take a look right here. He has the low pass, which is actually pretty solid, both his passing stats. Both the low and lofted are solid for being a striker. And he has good finishing, good heading. Decent speed is not the quickest one, but he has okay speed for being a big guy. Uh, good kicking power. He has heading, ship shot, first time shot. He also has the passing ability. That is really important in this setup, I think, because that gives you the opportunity to use him as almost like a... Kind of like a false nine. He's not a false nine, but you can use him as a play point in the middle if you need it because he has one touch and through pass and also he has track back captain c fighting spirit really solid team player really important to have him although i think actually diago tomas started a lot of games last year in the game right here he is only uh, 71 rated not fully developed in the game yet but uh, he has some decent skills he can finish okay he has okay heading he has good speed and good kicking power and he can also do the heading and can do the first time shot and he has track back and fighting spirit so he's also a solid team player he will be able to assist a little bit on the high press that we're going to talk a little bit about in a minute and then you have a third option up front it's Luis Felipe and this guy is a traditional target guy very tall very strong and physical. He has good finishing, good heading, good kicking power, good physical contact. And he's basically your typical inside the box target player because he doesn't have the passing ability of uh, Bolinho. So this guy is a little bit more one dimensional, but of course it can be very useful if you use him uh, the, the right way because he has heading, he has first time shot. So if you get around on the wing and you whip it inside the box, this guy can definitely score some goals. Let's take a look at the attacking instructions. We are playing a possession game. We are playing short passes. We are attacking wide. We are maintaining formation. We need to rely on our players to stick in their positions and do like the assignment they're supposed to do. And then we have a three support range to be able to do these quick combinations on the wings when we try to get around. And for the advanced instructions, I'm gonna activate hug the touchline to stretch the defense. And that takes us to the defense. So the defense obviously is always the most difficult thing 
the implement in the game, right? Because defense will also rely a lot on your opponent, which game plan your opponents have and which team he's playing with, right? But in general, Sporting like to do a high press on the opponent half. The front three are going to try to win the ball high. And they're going to try to force, like in general, this team likes to force the opponent to play it wide. They like to try to force the team to do risky wide passes. We're going to play with wide containment. I'm going to talk about the instructions a little bit in a bit. But in the middle right there, once the opponent has the ball in the middle, we want to overload, stack as many players as possible inside the middle to force him to do the wide pass. And if they are able to play their way through the first line of press, then the entire team will fall back and they will try to form a line uh, just in front of their own box. And then we have the wing back instruction, the wide midfielders will fall back and you will have seven players in front of your own box. And from there, they will try again to do the aggressive press to try to win the ball back without exposing too much space in behind them, but do a controlled press. Like I said earlier, we're trying to force them out on the wing. And I guess we can take a look at the defensive instructions. We're doing frontline press, then we're doing wide containment to press them out on the wing, try to force them to do the pass outside on the wing. We have aggressive pressuring, and then we're gonna have a medium defensive line because they like to play with a medium block. And then the compactness, it's gonna be really tight. And this in combination with swarm the box, which also plays into the wide containment. If we force them out on the wing, they are probably gonna try a cross inside the box. And if we swarm the box, we're gonna have lots of players in there to try to break up the cross and clear it. We're also gonna do the wing back to get our wide midfielders back into defense. So that's basically it. And I mean, this is a formation that more and more teams are actually using. I can name uh, Chelsea have played this under Antonio Conte. Uh, also, Thomas Tucker have used a variation of this. You also have Brighton, Graham Potter, who likes to use something similar to this. And obviously, this is relying on the players you have in the squad, right? Because this squad is built to play like this. You have Pedro Porro on the right, on the right midfield. You have Nuno Mendes on the on the left midfield, and these players fit in very well. They are basically originally they are fullbacks but they have the ability to play wide midfield as well. And that's the key right here, because we need players to play their original positions. We don't want too many players playing in their secondary positions, which can hurt their performance. But enough tactics. Let's jump into online divisions and see how this works out. Maybe we'll face Bayern and we will be able to see how this works out against the best team in the game. Okay, so here we are, online divisions. Okay, so our first opponent, Glasgow Rangers, and my opponent is Division 6, he's the same division as me. He's rated 793, he has a 54 win percentage, scoring 2.3 and conceding 1.8 goals per game. So obviously, yes, it's gonna be a tough game, but at least the teams are equally rated and we are in the same division. So I don't think script is gonna play a huge part in this one. The one thing that's gonna play a huge part though is we are without Joao Palinha. That's actually the one position on the team we don't have a decent backup for. I'm actually not sure how to approach this. Like what should we do? Because we have a couple of options in the midfield. We have Mateusz Nunes and we have Daniel Vragantha. I guess we're gonna do with uh, we're gonna go with Mateusz Nunes right here. I'm not thrilled about it to be honest, but it's gonna it's gonna be what it is and Paulinho is on orange it's tempting to start him either way I'm gonna start Luis Felipe instead okay so this guy this this game is gonna be really tough I haven't played a single game without Paulinho so far from the from the friendly games I played he was always in good condition so but he was very important in in the way we played Especially defensively, so... I think he's gonna have an impact, you know, but uh, let's see, you never know. This guy is very patient in defense, this is a good player. He's not gonna give me anything for free, really have to work for it right there. 
Let's see Pedro Porro right there. A lot of space for Porro. Let's see Felipe inside the box. No way! How did I miss that one? So we place very typical meta up the middle. It does a lot of combination plays to get the attacking midfielder free. And then it tries to spring one of his strikers. Nothing special right here. He just tries to take advantage of the game mechanics. If I'm able to play patiently right here, I think I will be able to get a good result. Luna Mendes right here, maybe. Mateus Nunes with a very nice run. Let's get it back here and cross it in. Ooh! Here we go, Gonzalez. Very nice run. Porro. Ah. Gonzalez. There we go. Yes. Yes, we keep the lead at halftime. We have a lot of possession. We try to overload on the wing and we are able to do it like once in a while, but not every time. And I think we're going to keep playing the way we have been playing. Try to get the second goal. Try to keep possession and try to build, especially on the right side, I feel like we've been more effective so far in this game. We lose the ball right here. Not good, not good. Ooh. I'm considering putting on Paulinho up top to get a little bit more dynamic dynamicism up front. No. Oof. Close, it's very close right there. No, it's offside. No, not offside. And this, come on! Oh, that's so close. <laughs> so close. So bad, that cross, it's so bad. Polinho right here, Polinho, no! I mean, that's a very nice pass, but a poor ball reception, and then he has to fend off the defender. That's too much for a player in orange condition. Gonçalves, nice. Porro, Gonçalves, Gonçalves! Paulinho! Nice. Nuno Santos, we pick up the win. Very nice win. The goal we conceded was on a set piece. I wasn't totally paying attention. Other than that, I don't think he created anything, right? And game summary, we have a lot of possession. We create a decent amount of chances. We limit the opponent. We play well against a good opponent. Not the best team, but a good opponent nonetheless. Game number two, Manchester United. And this fellow is in Division 7, rated 779. And he has a 55 win percentage, scoring 2.3 and conceding 1.6. And it seems like he's switching teams a little bit between France and obviously Manchester United. He has also played with Poland, 
And looking at the opponent's formation, it doesn't play too differently from our last opponent, so it's almost like a meta formation, right? Using the, the three strikers. Now taking a look at our team, Palinja again on red. Are you kidding me? Not only Palinja on red, we have Joao Mario on orange, we have Braganza on orange, Mateus Nunes on red. What is going on here? I mean, this is, this is a disaster, right? We're actually forced to start Palinja on red. I'm not joking, we have to start him on red. No way I'm starting Braganza on orange. Gonsalves orange, Joao Mario orange. I'm gonna try Bruno Tabata instead of Gonsalves in this one because we have a lot of other players on green condition, so we don't have to rely that much on Gonsalves. Let's see how it works out, okay? I mean, two central midfielders in bad condition. I just know something weird is gonna happen with one of those two. I'm gonna try to avoid using them, you know, for, for, for the build-up too much. I'm gonna try to use the, the players in good condition, but you never know once you get into a situation where you just forget you're controlling a player in bad condition. No! I thought I had it, but you know, it's Palinja and Guates in the middle. But I think because Palinja was in there, the ball just... The game just makes something happen, you know, because it's a player on red condition. Look at Palinja! Again Palinja! Wow! No, Paulinho! What? He was totally free. He ran free from his marker. He was all alone. No. That's a nice goal. I'm too slow on the press. Cavani is able to turn around. And you know Bruno is going to make those runs being the whole player. Just too easy. It's too easy. We're not quick enough on the press. Here we have Paulinho, Abata, Paulinho maybe, no. Not enough time to go on the counter right there, but nice to see Paulinho a little bit <laughs> capable of doing something in this game. So he has had two chances, he scored on both, and I know <laughs> both goals, uh, I'm not too happy with the defense. So realistically, what can we actually do right here? You know, with Joao Mario already on uh, orange. Let's put on Gonsalves. Let's try this. Just to get a little bit more edge. It's gonna leave us a little bit more exposed in the middle in defense, but let's try this and see how it works. Oh! We get the lucky deflection. It gets Luke Shaw almost with his back. Deflecting it into the goal. We're back in the game. Gonsalves and Tabata right here. We need the overlap from uh, Porro. Let's go. Porro right here. Poli Polinho! Oof! Penalty? Nah, offside. Alinea. Guates right here. Nuno. Ooh, that's so close. It's a little bit off. Guates was all alone. I mean, I'm starting to believe we can turn this around, actually. Oh, that's close. Gonsalves. Oof. Okay, so it's five minutes remaining. Let's see if we can make some adjustments. I don't think it's necessary, but let's try. I want to try out Joelson right here, but he doesn't play on the on the right side. So 
Let's do Giovanni Cabral. We win it back though. Cabral. Porro. Cabral. Polinho! Golazo! We're at 90 plus 1. We have one more chance. One more good attack. We can get the winner. If I know the game correctly, with the script and everything, we have a little bit of momentum because we scored last. Let's see if we can get the winner here. Giovanni right here. Gonzalez. Nuno. Santos. Oof. Nuno again. Let's whip it in. Polinho! That's a shame. We, at least we get the draw, but what a game. What a comeback. Let's take a look. Here's the goal from Cavani, right? That's the first one. I think we have... It's Guates and Palinha. And you see Palinha makes the last touch right there. It just bounces off him. Let's see. Tries to pass... Here, Palinha breaks it up and then he just nudges it directly into the path of Cavani and he just bam. So in this game, possession was a little bit more balanced. He only created the two goals and we had a lot more chances. A little bit unlucky maybe, but considering he was leading 2-0, I'm happy with the draw. So let's move on. Okay, so third and final game, it's against Real Madrid. And this guy is Division 8. He is 519 rated, so not too high as a 30 win percentage. He's scoring 1.2 and conceding 1.4. However, it looks like he is playing with Denmark usually and now is playing with Real Madrid. Maybe he needs a win, so it's changing teams to promote maybe. So I think he is obviously a little bit better than these stats indicate. And we finally have Palinha in green condition, finally. But we have a lot of other problems though. So Adan is not going to start. I'm going to use the backup. Luis Maximiano. Fedal is not going to play in defense. We're going to use Eduardo Quaresma, Pedro Porro and Nuno Mendes. Orange. On the left side, I like to use Mateus Reis instead. And then on the right side, you know what? I am going to use... Let's start Plata right here. No, 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 no. I'm going to start Joao Pereira. So at least we have our forwards ready to go. Our central midfield ready to go. Our wide players. It's going to be a little bit different in this one, right? So the players feel slow, so slow. Nice tackle. Nuno Santos. Let's see if Reis can do the overlap. Nice. Ah. Close. It was very close, actually. You see Cuates. A nice Palinha. Pereira. Gonzalez, maybe. Oh, close. I feel like my players are <laughs> very, very slow to react to things. It feels like he has a huge advantage. Obviously, Real Madrid is way better. And sporting, right? So th there should be some advantage, but it's very, very h tough, you know? No. No! Oof. Especially Real Madrid, they are so quick. <sighs> Playing these long balls, though, but I feel like only has Benzema up there, so there shouldn't be a problem, right? <laughs> Script against and lag. <laughs> it's not easy here, okay? It's no e not an easy game by any means. I mean, if this guy needs a win, he's obviously gonna... <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Just pass the ball around, right? If he needs to. Oh, so, so close. Very close at the end there, but I don't know. My players are just not responsive at all. Very, very unresponsive, so we need to make some adjustments. One thing that worked very well 
in the last game was putting a player right here and we have Joao Mario capable of doing that so let's do like this let's put on Porro and Nuno Mendes even though they are on orange Come on, come on, no, no, I mean it felt like every defensive player was just making the play possible, you know what I mean? Every player was just a little bit late and they're not even trying to do like the tackle or stick their foot out or anything. Post! Come on! So we lose the game two goals by Benzema. Both goals totally avoidable under normal circumstances, but in this one... My players were so... They were basically avoiding the ball in defense. Right here. We almost intercepted Nuno Mendes. Then we can't win it with the first defender. The second defender avoids the ball. The third defender avoids the ball. There's nothing about skill in that game, in that move at all. It's just the game making space for him. Okay, so we lose this one. A horrible attacking game. I mean, his tactics were fairly solid. He had five at the back. It's tough to break down a Real Madrid back five. No excuses, but it obviously was very tough if you look at the game statistics. So let's do a quick recap. There you have it, we played three games in online divisions, we beat Rangers, good rated player, we draw with Manchester United, a good rated player, and then we face a lower rated Real Madrid and we had no chance, but overall, definitely this is a good tactic, if you play a lot with it, you will be able to learn it and learn all the players, and you will play some good football, I'm convinced of it, but by no means, I don't think this is a tactic for a beginner trying to play PES for, like for the first time, trying, especially online divisions, trying to have some fun, you're not gonna have any fun in online divisions as a beginner with this kind of tactic, especially with a three and a half star team, you're gonna have a tough time, right? So. But I think if you're able to play this way and you know what you're supposed to do, the perfectly fine tactic to use if you have all your players in good condition and the script is not too much against you, it's gonna work perfectly fine. So what do you think about the tactics? Have you played with sporting? Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear about it. And if you have any ideas about tactics or teams to try out in the game just let me know in the comments and i want to thank you so much for watching stay safe and i will see you guys in the next one